Hi, I'm Adam Taylor with ITS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at something that's fundamental to just about every class, and that is testing. Within Land School, we have the ability to create testing content, which we can then push out to our students and get feedback on. This is a really great way of creating engaging content for your students and to get feedback on how they're progressing within your class and your subject. In this video, we'll be taking a look at exactly how to build a test from scratch, how to explore the various different options when creating a test, how to save and export your tests and take them home with you, and how to prepare content for your class. To get things started, we want to go up to the testing icon, select the drop down on the right hand side, and go to create test. Now this is going to open up a window called the Land School Test Builder. This is actually a separate application to Land School. It can be launched completely independently of the teacher console. So if your whole working day is completely taken up with what you need to do in the classroom, you can always just take this home as a separate application and work on it there. To do that, you just want to go to Program Files, Land School, within Land School there's a folder called Testing, and you can just copy that whole folder. The two things you need there are the Test Builder and the DLL file. All of these files ending in .lst are just example tests that you can use to get familiar with. If you load the test builder from here, it's the same as launching it from within Land School. So feel free to pop that on a USB stick and take it home with you. If we open one of those example tests, just to get an idea of the structure, we have 10 questions on the left hand side. As we see, these are multiple choice questions. And if we just scroll down through a few of them, we'll see that there's actually images as part of this test as well. So that's quite important. We can select the style of question, but we can also include images on it, which will make them a bit more interactive and a bit richer. If we load a different test, we can see here it's just multiple choice, but we've just got two options rather than five. So let's create a test. We go up to the left, new test. and we'll be prompted to create our first question. As we can see down here, we have a few different options for questions. By default, you can have a true or false question. And you can also rename the true and false fields to say yes and no. This is gonna be a very binary test, very simple, just simply one question or the answer with a definitive right and wrong answer. Below that, we have multiple choice with up to five options. Here you can nominate which of these answers is the correct one. Below that we have a free text answer. So rather than selecting it off a list, the students actually can have to type in the correct word matching your word and you can have multiple correct answers within this field. Then finally we have the essay style question. There's no right answer and it'll have to be marked by yourself afterwards. Below that we can import an image into our question. So those are our various options for creating a quiz. So let's create a new test. The subject of my test is going to be famous landmarks from around the world. And what we'll do is we'll create one question of each type. So for our first question, true or false. Now obviously the answer is true, the pyramids are from Egypt and we'll select the accompanying image, like so. Now I want to save that question. And this is how it's going to appear to the students. If I want to go back and change that question, I can just click on Edit Question and make any changes I want here. We're now going to add a second question. Again, Add Question. For this question, we use multiple choice with one correct answer. For this question, we'll use D as the only correct answer. Save. Now this is a single select multiple choice. 
In this question we're going to have two correct answers and the student is going to need both of them to get a pass mark. We'll use London. So we're going to make this question harder. There's three correct answers hidden in here and they need all three of them ticked to get the correct answer. So if we compare this to the previous multiple choice question, here we can see you can only select one, whereas here you could tick all five or none at all to get the right mark. Another question. This time we'll do an open text question so the student will actually have to type the word in. So here we can enter all of the possible correct answers. The right one is Pisa, we could also accept Pisa lowercase and we could also accept pizza. Just an example. Common misspelling. So they'd have to type in any of those three words to get the point. Now for our final question. Use Mount Rushmore. And we'll select essay question. So this is the only one when there's no predefined correct answer. Instead, as a teacher, you have to mark this one manually. Saved. Now that our test is complete, we want to save it. So click save test. And you can save this file wherever you like. So on a USB stick, on OneDrive, Google Drive, whatever it is you use, part of your profile or my documents. It's also worth bearing in mind that the name of the test is student facing, which means they will see it. So you want to give it a proper name, not just a code name. For example, Geography Module 2 Landmarks. It's been saved and we can also see that now appears at the top of the quiz as well. So we're now able to load this quiz in at any point and that test is gonna go out to the students, they're gonna be able to take that and it'll be marked in real time, which we'll see on the next video. One last thing on the test builder is that you can also go to export and this will allow you to export the images you've used. So when you enter an image into the test, you'll still have that source file, but there'll be a copy of the file carried within the test file of Land School and this just allows you to export those images back out. So we export it, go back to our testing folder, and then all the screenshots appear there as well. So that's done. As I said, in the next video, we'll look at exactly how testing works from the student side, uh, pushing the test out to them, letting them take it, letting it automatically mark, and some of the various settings that we can use for that. I hope that you make full use of the test builder and create some really fun and engaging content for your students.